The views and opinions expressed in the following program are those of the hosts and guests, and not necessarily those of the staff or management of Worldwide Digital Broadcasting Corporation. It's time for Doing It With Style. You've either got or you haven't got style. If you got it, you stand out of my Hey, thanks for coming back. Uh, I knew you guys would because uh, I saw you last week. So I'd like to welcome you to another edition of Doing It With Styles. And today I've got a special, special guest for all of my single friends out there. Um, and this is Elaine Casal, right? Correct. Cool, I got that right. Uh, I even spelled it right and that's why I write this stuff down. Now, you have a business, a company called Interactions. Correct. And I'm a little bit confused. Is this a dating service or is this a matchmaking well, service? Well, I always called myself a dating service and that's what my website Interactions Dating. But when they got all these online goofy things, I didn't want to be in competition with them because I'm totally different. I have always been a matchmaker. So my company really matches you with the right person. Okay. I do. You come in and um, the dating part is right because it takes a lot of frogs till you meet sure. your friends. Sure, of course. So, so uh, wait, wait, I have to okay. interrupt you there. So that's okay. what women say. Women say you gotta kiss a lot of frogs before you find your prince. Right. Okay, so what is the analogy from the man's side? <laughs> okay. Have you ever thought of that? Yes, of course. Okay. You may not like my answer. No, no, no. It's your answer. I don't, you know, whether I like okay. it or not. Well, but you're a man. Well, so. Okay. In, Thank you for noticing, by the way. Oh, you're welcome. <laughs> In my, I've been doing this for 20 years here okay. and before. When a man walks into my service, he really wants to meet the right person person. He uh, doesn't like being out there. Men don't like the dating scene. It's frustrating for them because now that I know, I think the women are more, you know how the men, woman says, oh, he didn't call me, he didn't call me. That's their fault. If they want... That's the women's fault? Absolutely. And, and why do you say that? Because... If they were interested in the man, he knows it. He feels it. I, I agree with that. And he's going to call you because he likes that feeling. Of course. That you care for him. And feeds that his your, ego. Feeds and, his right. ego. And he wants to talk to you some more. Sure. But when women do that, it, it mystifies me. Well, you, you went out on an evening. You talked about all your war stories about your horrible husband. You didn't talk about him at all. You talked about you, 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 and you wonder why he didn't call you. Well, that's why he didn't call you. So he moves on to the next. I introduce him to someone else. I introduce her to someone else. When she finally gets the idea that each man is not gonna be the man she's gonna marry, and the idea of a dating service is that you can look for the things that you want. Mm -hmm. And that's what the men do too. Right. They, they're not gonna settle, they don't have to. Uh, sometimes it's the first time they're young and they don't have to settle at all because I introduce them to so many nice women that they have their little list and they go through it and they find what they want and 88%, I think I said, of my people wind up together. Cool. So I, I don't, men, women, it really doesn't matter. They, we all are the same, really, when it comes to dating. And we all, I think the feelings, uh, you know when someone cares about you. I, I agree. And you know when they don't. When right, and I, I, I don't think there's any question about it. I, let me rephrase that. I, 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 based on some personal experience, okay. there are times when you think, oh, she's interested in me. Absolutely. But then you second guess yourself and you say, well, no, you know, she's just being nice to the old guy or, you know, something like that. Um, so how do you combat that? Oh, okay. 
she's being nice because that's what we do. If you're a lady and you go out, I can't stand women who go out with men and actually that I introduce them to and they're rude. Yeah. Oh, I wanted someone with black hair and dark eyes. You sent me a blonde. Hello, what is wrong with you? This is, how about other things that, that, that blend? Right. So how do I put this? You know, I just want to give you a little example before yeah, I answer do. your question. I I had a gal that loved to dance, loved to dance. Joan, her name was, and she just loved it, loved it. That was she'd say, put, show me a dancing floor, and I'm on it. Okay, there were other things, but that was like something she had enjoyed doing when she went out. And when she joined, she'd say, you know, Elaine, I go bachelor number one, bachelor number two, bachelor number three. I said, okay, that's a good idea, Joan. So she said, I was sitting and waiting for bachelor number five. It was at the Bellagio. And she said she saw him walk through the door and she went, just on looks. Oh, God. Next, bachelor number six. She said, when they sat down and had a drink, cocktail, started to talk, she said, wow, he was getting handsomer by the minute. <laughs> Plus, he was, get, he was so interested that she just didn't want to stop the conversation. Right. Then he said, oh, come on, they're playing that song. Do you want to dance? And she said, Elaine, when he put her, his arms around me, I knew there was never going to be a bachelor number six. So you don't know. Right. You don't know. And I had one young man who used to say, I'm not good on a first date. I'm nervous. But if she'll give me a second date, <laughs> I just fly from there. I go, okay, that's good. And women sometimes are the same way. Women are nervous. and you know. So do you have any advice for first daters? Yeah. Both men and women. Both men and women. Boy, I put this on my website. Please. Hello, how are you? Nice to meet you. What do you do? What do I, okay, he's going to ask, what do you do? Not what your grandchildren do. Don't take out your children. Don't talk about your ex-husband. Don't talk about yesterday. Oh, and what are you planning to do? How exciting. That's what you do on a first date. And and if you want him to call you, you say, you know, I'm li literally looking forward to another evening like this. And he knows then. There's no secret. Right. If he doesn't call you, then he wasn't looking forward to another date. Do, do you find that women play that game? And I'll get to the men next. Okay, but honey. The women that play that game that... Um, well, I don't want to seem too anxious or desperate, or I don't want him to know right good. away that, that I care about him. No, or no. Good, good, good question. You know what? There's no point in playing a game if you're already in the dating surface. Right. Uh, there's no point because you are going to meet plenty of gentlemen. You could think to yourself, okay, this was a lovely evening, and I hope that Elaine finds the right one for you. I, I don't know that we were a match, but I think it's right. great. There's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I had a situation like that where someone set me up on a blind date with someone. And, okay. and um, we met for coffee okay. in a public place just for the first time. Absolutely. And yeah, that's what uh, I tell people to do. Very, very, very nice woman. And we sat there, and after about 10 minutes, she looks at me and she goes, You know, I'm sorry, John, but this just isn't working. I don't think that. that and it was like, I was like, oh, thank you, God, <laughs> because I was feeling the same way. Of and course. it's like a lovely lady. I liked her. We, you know, and, and we, we actually became friends and stayed friends of over course, the years. Of course. But it's not somebody that I would have been romantically involved, involved with, with or, yeah. or wanted to spend my life with. You know, it's like, yeah, you know, you could be, you could be a good friend. You know what that and, song? And, it, and it's, it's sad that we sometimes miss those opportunities. Because just because I don't want to marry you doesn't mean, hey, once in a while we can go out Let's and... Let's go to you know. a movie or something. Right. And so. just be pals if you're not doing anything. If you really want that right person, then you you know, you know just keep dating and you still yeah. maintain your friends. <clears throat> and um, you know the song, Some Enchanted Evening? Yes. All I do is make it that evening happen. 
And you know if there's chemistry, by God. In the first five minutes. Oh, yeah. I, I, I mean, well, oh, yeah. may, maybe not, but I, I don't know. I, I've just always found that uh, I instinctively know whether or not I'm interested in someone. Of course. And you know what? I've dated, I'm sure you've dated, I've dated people that were lovely to go out in the evening with, lovely to have dinner with, lovely to talk to. Okay, you want to go see uh, something at the Smith Center? Wonderful, I'll be there. Do I want to be intimate with that person? No. Yeah. And I know that. When you get the whole thing where you can talk and talk. Or not talk. Oh yeah, you know. And 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 yeah. driving in the car, and you don't have, have to, to say a anything. Word. You know, you don't have to be to make conversation. Right. No, no, right. no, 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 absolutely not. You, you know, um, yeah, or just the whole idea is that the person that you're in love with could be in the next room, and you're not. You're doing one thing, and he's doing another, but he's there, so yeah. that makes it nice. Yeah. It's, so it's, so I'm, I'm going to ask you a few questions uh, okay. about yourself. Okay. Um, and I understand if I'm correct, you told me you're from, from Chicago? I am. Does that mean you were born in Chicago? I was born in Chicago, but when people say Chicago, I was not born in the city. Right. No, no, no. I know. There's McHenry and there's all these other places around. McHenry is way far. There's yeah. the North Shore, right. the North Side, the suburbs and that's but you're I'm in that from. part of the country i'm in the suburbs okay of, of chicago the northern suburbs my and daughter still lives there when when did you leave chicago 20 years ago to come here really to come to vegas uh-huh and what brought you to vegas well my mother had passed away oh sorry and um there was no need for me to be there my kids i my daughter had just gotten married and was traveling traveling they were going to Europe, they were doing this, they were doing that. And I thought, no, oh, she's not having grandkids right away. And the opportunity came, the gentleman I worked for, Interactions, in Chicago, said, let's open up in Vegas. So he did. And he said, come on, you're going to be the one who runs it. Cool. So I did. But I found out that he didn't care about the people. The main office was in Michigan. And I would send the files there. And he'd go do whatever he did. And somebody was sitting at that computer going, oh, yeah, well, okay, let's do her. She's 60, he's 62, let's match them. But I'm the one that sat with them. Yeah. And I had this phenomenal gal working for me. Arden was a radio person. She had this radio voice, did commercials. And... Uh, there was no one and she wrote copy advertising like no one in the world so she'd answer the phones and she'd go <gasps> it's another person <laughs> it's miserable and so she said Elaine let's do something let's match them ourselves well I wasn't smart enough to know how to connive or do anything right. wrong so I sent him the files with all the money, with all the information, but we made another file, and we matched them personally without that system, without anything. Right. Because it was just kind of beginning, and we knew what we were doing. <clears throat> and what gave us away was I met someone, and they fell in love. And she sent a letter that they sent back to me going, who is this person? Yeah. It's so wonderfully happy. <laughs> We never matched them together. Right. I know who she is. I know what who the hell is. are you doing out what there? What are you doing? So he came and he said, "You're so smart. Why don't you buy it?" So my clients actually loaned me the money to buy the business, and of course I paid them all back, and I bought myself. Cool. It wasn't so cool. It was dumb that I bought myself, but I didn't know any better. Yeah. So I bought myself and the system, and. Uh, my people are now, as I said before three times, 88% of my people wind up together. There's always people, it's a variable. And when people join, there's no guarantee. See, now, if you would have told me that 90 or 95 or 100% of your people get together, I, I wouldn't have believed you. Of course not. Because that's not possible. It's not possible. Right. And when someone joins, 
they have to know that. Right. They get upset. They that's this new Yelp, whatever it is. They write terrible things on Yelp that aren't true, and I answer them. Right. The the lady who wanted the Frenchman and took me to court because she didn't meet the Frenchman with the black hair. I mean, how nutty is that? And then when tell when, her to go to France. Well, when the bailiff <laughs> went up to her and went. <laughs> and I thought, duplicitousness. So I called the the city hall. I said, wait a minute, I didn't have a chance at bailiff. Well, they were hysterical, the lady who works with the judge. She says, honey, we were just joshing. I, it, I, I am married to a Frenchman with black hair. She says, I'm not loaning her my husband. Yeah. What, is she nuts or yeah. what? So, you know, people have to take those things in of mind. Course. Or someone that's, uh, I try not to take people that are, like, when you look in the mirror, at least see what you see. Right. I have women that are, like, maybe 85 pounds overweight and think they look like Marilyn Monroe. I, I understand. Men that, men sit there, big bellies, white hair, white hair. Write down. You're, you're getting a little personal now. Well, wait a minute. <laughs> they go, what color have you got? Brown. So I'll go, excuse me, John. This is white. This is dark. <laughs> Do you see it? And, and that's funny because my ex-wife, when my hair started turning, as long as I still had a little streak of color to it, and, and, and uh, I would say, no, you know, my hair is auburn. No, it's great. So I go to the motor vehicle, and when I'm filling out my thing and my hair, I've got there, you know, auburn is what I put on the color. Right, that's see. And, and the woman looks at me, and she goes, that's gray. It's gray. <laughs> you, it's know? gray. you know what I want? So then I finally started admitting I it. once took a guy to a, because he's, he's sitting there, he says, well, I'm, I want someone lo like, um, oh, let's say Angelina Jolie. And I said, okay, and I want this and I want that. And because look at me. And I said, you know what? <laughs> I bet you bought that mirror in at an auction. He goes, what mirror? I said, from the Snow White and the Southern Doors. <laughs> the magic mirror. You look at it and it goes, mirror, mirror, and it tells you you are. I said, but you know what? One guy who actually thought he looked like Robert Redford. And I said, honey, you look more like Mel Brooks. <laughs> Which was not a bad thing, but, but it's reality. It, it's it's good that you do that. Yeah, but they because don't you like can't. It. No, they may not like it, but they're not going to like anything that you do for them from that point on. If you just agreed with them and said, "Yes, you look like Robert Redford," and we'll find you somebody, that's going to. There's look no like way them. that anybody's going to be happy with with the results. So get them out early. Well, <laughs> you that's what, you know what. Or if someone comes to me, I I know this sounds terrible, that. Is really I can't match. Yeah. And I'll say to her, I, I really can't. I have no one right now to match you with. And uh, that's the key, though. What you said, I have no one right now. That's right. 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 Because who knows what tomorrow might bring? Well, that's the answer. I tell them, you're going to go out with Bill and John and Jack, and meanwhile, Greg is going to come in maybe in two weeks, and then you're going to meet him. Yeah. I just had. A darling woman join, and I have a sweet widower that I know is going to love her. And that's all I could think about during yeah. the interview. I'm going to match this woman with Ron, and they're going to get along wonderful because she was the sweetest gal. And lo and behold, this is a gal who had never been married before. Wow. Older, too. Darling. Just, I don't know. Sometimes, I, I, it's hard for me to fathom, but, you know, sometimes people are in different points in their life. Of course, yeah. Yeah, so. And maybe going through stuff that they didn't want to, you know, share or whatever, so. It's funny. Yeah. It's, it, you know what, I love my job. I love when. So you've been doing this 20 years now. Yes, okay. and I love when I get letters in the mail that tell me how much how wonderful it was right out of the box sometimes the first person i do bingo yeah it is and that one couple that i, I swear to god that i got that letter from and just so cute i knew 
I knew when he left, I called her and I said, I just met the man you're going to marry. And she wrote me a letter, how did you know? <laughs> I just felt it. Everything he said yeah. was what she wanted. Everything. So so do you think that, that a lot of these dating services or dating sites or whatever oh, on the internet have scary. kind of ruined it? Because when when when, when I think matchmaker and, and I, I know this sounds weird or funny, but all I can think about is fiddler on the roof. Oh yeah. And yeah. and the whole segment there with the you know, the village woman that came around and you know, matched everybody up and I've got a guy she for you and she didn't do such a good job either. She no. was busy she was gonna match her with an old man. Yeah. But I'm saying that, that but I I I understand the concept of Absolutely. these are people that you have met and it's not somebody that just comes That's in right. does a little thing on front of them. hi you know I like sports and uh, you know wrestling and uh, and beer on Saturdays and walks and, on on the beach yeah yeah <laughs> and here's what's funny whenever I walk on the beach I never see couples walking on the beach at moonlight drinking wine and all that shit and I'm wondering <laughs> so it. where the hell are all these people you know. So anyway, Where are the people walking in the <laughs> yeah. moonlight. The only people you see usually that are walking on the beach are people that want to be alone, walking by themselves. Yes, and having grown up around the ocean, yeah, I understand that. That's cool. Yeah, so, it's so. not Richard Gere and Diane Lane in that movie. Oh and yeah, Ned's, what was that? It was a Sparks movie, a Ned, a Ned Sparks movie. That was, was the one. Oh, it was, it was beautiful. Yes. When they she had that house. Let me tell you my favorite. Okay. My favorite. And this this goes back to and I don't I don't know why this is my favorite. Um and and it was uh it was called Hanover Street. Hanover Street. Hanover Street. And it was uh uh can't remember the the actor's name now. Played uh, Han Solo and and uh um yeah. Ford? Uh, yeah, Harrison Ford. Okay. It was Harrison Ford and uh English actress. Uh, I'm good in movies, so English. Actress. Downs. Uh, Downs. Yeah, two, two, like two first names. Downs, like Marianne Downs, or, or anyway, he was a. It, it was during the Second World War, and he was a a bomber pilot. Okay. I she know. was married to uh, a British intelligence officer, and um, they kind of had this just. It's a remake. Do you know that it's a remake? No, no, no. This was this was like twenty years ago. This movie but came I, out. But if you ever watch TMC, okay, yes, I do. You're describing a movie with Van Johnson, Deborah Carr was married to this man. Okay. And um, they fell in love. He was a bomber pilot, and yeah. I, so I, what happened? Nothing really. Oh, in in the one I'm thinking about, the bomber pilot ends up going on a mission with this woman's husband. Yeah. Okay. Not good. knowing, they get shot down behind enemy lines, and they have to help each other get back. And neither one knew until closer to the end when when they found out, or he found out, Harrison Ford found out that, oh my God, this is what's her name's husband, you know. So, so it was a cool movie. But it was like one of those things where that and Cyrano de Bergerac was also one of my favorites. Well, so. What about um, when you were talking about that? What about the beautiful one with um, Gina Rowland and um, oh God, you know? Uh, John Cassavetti. No. No, it wasn't with John Cassavetti. Uh, her son did it. It was a net. It was Sparks it, and and Ryan Gosling and Rachel McAdams. Uh, that beautiful love, The Notebook. Mm. Well, they played the old. Yeah, yeah, that was cool. James Gardner. Yep. And he was in that nursing home with her. Oh my God, that's enough to make you cry. I know. Yeah. So 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 let's There's move some on. Beautiful <laughs> movies. Yeah, I'm a big. I'm a big. My favorite's Gone with the Wind. Really? That, oh. That's up there, but I, I mean, only because, because of what a head, spectacle it was. In yeah. my head, she gets him back. Oh, okay. So you rewrote the ending? No. Oh. I did, there was no, it was like whatever right. you wanted to think. Yeah. It's like the lady or the tiger. Yeah. She goes, well, I'll think about it tomorrow. I must get him back. I have to get him back. Boom. I know she does. He okay. loved her too much. Yeah. But that, that 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 doesn't always. That's not always enough. Wow. <laughs> so you were an opera singer. Yeah, I was. 
Wait, and, and is that correct terminology when I say was? Or do you well, still, I still sing? sing? I do things with uh, Las Vegas Opera Society. Um, and we have a lot of fun with it. Nothing serious. Um, Clint Holmes' mother once said something to me. That I love I, uh, Clint and Kelly are awesome. Oh, they, just absolutely awesome people. He's I had probably, her. in my eyes, here's a plug, Clint. <laughs> I think he's the most talented guy here in Vegas. It, 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 he can do anything. Yep. He's wonderful. I. Every time people used to come to Vegas when I got, and he was in here, I took to yes. include home. And everyone said, oh, my God. He is such a versatile performer. and, and, and uh, He's talent personified. So his mother came to this thing at the Opera Society, and I'm sitting at the table with her. And we, his mother was an opera singer, you know. So we started to sing, and she goes, oh, my God, girl. Why aren't you singing? And I said, well, you know, I can't do a whole opera anymore. She says, who the hell is asking you to? Just get up and sing. Yeah. Yeah. And you know what? And Kelly, I, the first time I did do that for them, Kelly and Clint were there, and I was nervous. And Kelly said, half these people can't do anything. I, I know. She, she's awesome. And huh? she says, just be there. Just do it. Yeah. And Pia Zadora was adorable. She was there. She says, come on. She said, get up there. She was adorable, too. She's, she's nice. Everyone's nice here. I, I, I think that's kind of why I like it, and um, especially doing what I'm doing here, is that one thing I found about the entertainers and performers and most of the people in this town is they try to support each other. Oh, yeah. And they try to help each other. Oh, and, yeah. And, uh, you know, it's not, uh, L.A. is completely different. Oh, uh, you know, uh, There's some good people there, don't get me wrong, but. Um, my roommate auditioned for the Metropolitan and got ill. And they were like, good, she's leaving. Now, if that was in Chicago when we auditioned for Lyric, they also are like, Go on, good luck, good luck. Yeah. You know, why not? Yeah. It, it doesn't hurt. Now, my honey used to have a band. Oh, really? Even though he's a remodeler. He used to have a band, and he did it all his life. And some of his friends said he started when he was in seventh grade. The Night Kings, he w was with the Night Kings. Oh, and, no kidding. Yeah, and he would just appear. They were just, uh, what, a couple of years back, they, uh, uh, didn't they get inducted into the Hall of Fame here? In I guess so. Yeah. I, I, and uh, Tony was just over at Lake Las Vegas on the lake there. Yeah, and, yeah nice. And they always bring my honey Do you up. happen to know Frankie Citro? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I know Frankie Shinta. That's even no, 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 no. I, uh, I Citro. Know. Yeah, I know who he is. Okay, all right. Yeah, so. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, it just made me think of it because I, I, did, I did some work for him when the Night Kings, when they got uh, put in the Hall of Fame and they did a show over at the Rhythm Kitchen, I think, and so I went oh. over there and filmed it for him. And oh, so, and Frankie yeah. was there and got up and sang? He, he was, yeah, he was, he, he was the MC. So, oh, okay. Yeah. Oh. But yeah, he got up and sang Actually, too. that's, but who I mentioned, that's another great. Oh, yeah. He He's another, I would almost I say. I run into him out of the bootlegger a couple times. Frankie so. Shinta? Yeah. Or Italian American. Nice woman. guy, yeah. Not only nice, play piano, sing, dance, do, do, yeah. do imitate everybody in the in the business. Yeah. The that man. If we have a lot of mutual friends. Well, my honey says about Frankie Shinta, if you just if he gets a cut, musical notes will come out. <laughs> He's oh that. We just, it, have you seen the show at the Plaza? Yeah. And you know, he's there is than, so much talent oh, in this town, and 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 if I had the beyond, money, beyond. if I had the money, I would open up a venue that that would showcase that talent because oh, yeah. there's no place here. I mean, Jerry you know, Tiffy over at the Italian American. Yeah, got, and, yeah. And you should hear my honey. He gets up there. He does <clears> the Jersey Boys, Frankie Valli. Right. Does, and he's good. He's still good. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. He's, so. Yeah, there. There's a lot of talent here. A lot of fun, a lot of nice people. But most of your effort is going into my, interactions. All my effort is okay. in interactions. All really. right. Yeah. Oh, I do. I do um, fundraisers for the uh, opera and stuff. Right. Yeah. Of course. Oh yeah. We got to give a little back. Oh, you you have to. Yeah. 
Yeah. That's what all of this is. This is this is my way of giving back. Well, that's fun. And because there there's there's what other what else did you do in entertainment? Obviously, you love it. Um, I just you know having having lived in Hollywood and grown up around a lot of performers and and it, it's I've always I've never wanted to be the one on stage. I did oh. do I did do some stand up and and you know in some clubs and stuff, but that was it, it was that was never my thing. I always liked um, the creative process behind oh. all of that, you oh. know, mixing everything together. And, and that's why this is, is, you know, was a passion that I kind of fell into accidentally. Okay. And uh, it, it's something that I spend uh, probably 70 hours a week doing this, between this and the editing and putting it all together and uploading it and all that stuff. And it, it's not a, you know, it's not a job. No, uh, it's it's it. it's a passion, yeah. and I'm lucky enough to have some cool people come in here and, and take Absolutely. advantage of it. So, well, you know what? Um, back to your question, like about Sorry. the dating services. Um, I think people are really taking a big chance on those dating services. First of all, um, according to uh, Metro and some people, that you know they keep it quiet because they can yeah but people get hurt oh yeah absolutely yeah and I know I've fact, heard yeah. a lot about some horror stories well it, you it, don't know who you're meeting and that's just it you I don't do check they, you've, you've got a list and they've checked off these boxes and they can put whatever they want in there well some people are married some yeah. people are how do you know if they don't have a record or right they, you know they're yeah. just yeah. <laughs> so matchmaking is the way to go Matchmaking is definitely the way to go. It's so much fun if you do this. I have never had anybody that after I they leave my office go, I'm excited, I can't wait. Because first of all, um, the men have fun. They meet people, they meet uh, they get invited to things. Women have fun. They're meeting new people, people that you would never meet. It's and you're not taking a chance. You know that the, these people, like you said, have all been screened through. Me. Right. Yeah. So so uh, on, on some you, sense. See now, just sitting with you, you get a feel of that person. Of course. Yeah. So actually, because I'm not trying to impress you. No, and and, and the truth of the matter is. Uh, that's why it takes a woman to do my job because a man isn't going to sit in front of another man and really tell. I I agree. And but and a woman doesn't feel comfortable. But uh, like you need someone that's outgoing like yourself. You don't need to be the center of attraction <coughs> all the time. That's probably true. But you could mingle with anybody and have fun. Yes. I and can, I do. Yeah. And I and that tell. that's the fun. It's it's like and that's why like I say the whole, the whole point of this show is not about me, it's about you. Yeah. And and I get to ask questions that you normally don't get asked. Okay. You know, if you go on the local television show for television station for 5 or 10 minutes to talk about what you do, they've got some questions they're going to ask you and then bang done, you're off, you know? Yeah. Thank you very much. We'll maybe we'll see you next time. Yeah. So uh, I'm going to ask you. Okay. I want to know Tell me about the biggest nightmare you ever had doing this. What was the worst one that you can think of? I think the one I talked about, she was a nightmare. And you know what? I'm going through a nightmare right now. Okay. I'm going through uh, with a woman. Uh, you know, if, if uh, truth. When someone comes in with anything else, or if I wanted to sign for a, a, a an office, I sign a lease. Right. Okay. You come to me. We join. It's all there. It's all written down, and you've signed it. You've read it. Okay. I didn't promise you a rose garden. I didn't. Okay. Well, I had a woman who. Um, she has two PhDs, okay, so in her mind, she's the smartest woman in the world. Right. That does not make her the smartest woman. No, it just means that she knows how to study for a test. Exactly. Right. 
So uh, I've introduced her to lovely people. I have heard that she uh, likes her wine a lot. <laughs> and then I guess she doesn't remember. Uh. Then she writes, what I do is I, I send people a bio of the other person. Okay. On the other side. Who prepares that bio? Me. There you I go. write it. Okay. And on the other side is an evaluation. So you went out on this date, and now you're going to fill in the evaluation. Ah, so I okay. know if I'm on the right track. Yeah, exactly. Maybe I'm doing the right what thing. What worked, what didn't. Then, exactly. Right. Well, I get these long letters from her. Now, so far, I've gotten three men who have all said the same thing. So everybody can't be. Lying. So you know there's some consistency there, and you know that that there's something, and they don't know each other, so they can't be making this stuff up. up. That's right. <laughs> yeah. But she's suing me, suing me. I just got all this stuff, and that's a pain in the yeah, rear end. Yeah, it is. And yeah, uh, you have to go. I had a man sue me because he got married. He wanted part of his money back. He got married through me. Well, I got married. I, I'm not using the whole year. Yeah, the judge was it someone that he met through your service? Of course. <laughs> the judge did just what you're doing. He said, go home, Richard. Go home. Go kiss your wife and thank her. Yeah. I mean, it's crazy. People, are, I, got a, I had a couple, if you really want to laugh, who got engaged. Now, she, he was 35. She was 26, okay? So I have a program for girls under 30. They're young. Yeah. They're usually school teachers or whatever. And it's a little special program, and they pay a little less. Okay. So he commented on what he paid, and she, oh, well, I, I, I'm under the 30 program, so I only paid X amount of dollars. He called the Better Business Bureau, and he... <laughs> Had me go. I will never forget it. So the uh, arbitrator said, "Wait a minute. Let me get this straight. You, this girl's wearing your ring. You're going to marry her. You're, you're engaged, right? Okay. So, but you're angry because you paid more than she did. Yeah. He said, she has a right to have a special program if she wants to." like for senior citizens yeah. or young people, and the rest all are in the regular category. Right, this group is easier than this group. Exactly. This group takes more work. This, yeah, that, that that's, yeah, that's understandable. So he said, bye. But, you know, meanwhile, you're going and you're listening to all this, and it aggravates yeah. me. And the older you get, the more aggravated I get because it's, <laughs> it's, um, it's like a waste of time. Yes. It's like, who who just said something? Oh, someone told me that um, people are so crazy anyway. Like if, it, like if you say, um, that's in my agreement actually, that uh, there's no, if, if puffery is used in an interview, that's, and you. What did, what, what did you call it, puffery? Puffery. So I learned that from my honey. If you puff yourself up to make yourself look better than well, in other, in other words, words, if you're lying, if you're it's li another word for lying. No, <laughs> you know what? Uh, no, it isn't lying. It's like, like the back of the phone book. You know, there's an attorney there. Yeah. So if you say, I heard this from an attorney, call me, the man who gets more calls than anyone in. Uh, Las Vegas. Okay. So some lawyers didn't like that and sued that lawyer because how do you know you get more from well you're allowed to say Yeah. That. I could you could say, Hey, I, I deal with hundreds of people all week long. I've had you know, you're not gonna say name their names or right. whatever. Right. But as long as you say whatever you want, who's it why would someone sue you? Well, you said you have hundreds of them. Right. Hello. Craziness. And, and and some people are just so so happy. And oh, so, I know. Yeah. So okay. So now tell me about the one that was the most fun, the one that 
through the whole 20 years, what's the one that sticks out more than any other? I that, love her. I love her. I love her. I, there's there's really more than one. But I, well, the one time, uh, this gal, gorgeous, gorgeous gal. And big job, big job running restaurants. If she's watching, she knows it's her. Beautiful. And wanted to be married and have a baby. Wanted to have a baby. I'd introduce her to great guys. Some of them were intimidated by her. She yeah. Beautiful. Uh, great job. Sometimes I'd meet her, because she didn't live far from me either. And I'd meet her at the grocery store. She'd say, oh, I thought it was a doll. She, I said, she said, but he didn't call. He said he was intimidated, obviously. Yeah. You know, he's like, why would she want me? Okay, so uh, she stayed in. We upgraded her every year. She had a little bit, you know, she was still in. I was still matching her. And she was fun, just always fun. Met some wonderful people. They all liked her. There wasn't anyone who right. didn't like her. Beautiful, fun girl. I meet this girl who says to me, I have a man who just got divorced, and he was older than her, uh, 18 years, I think, and uh, maybe 15, doesn't matter, and he came in and he joined, handsome guy, but, you know, 53, 35, so I told her, I said, would you go out with him? She said, would he still have children? And I said, yeah, I think so. Even though he's a grandpa, he would still have children. I said, we could jazz him up a little bit. And she changed his haircut and the way he dressed and all that. And they went to Austria, Germany. She really liked him. She thought he was great. She came in my office. This is this could be it. This could <laughs> be it. I really like him. And then one day I come into work. I'm sitting in the office. She comes in. I quit today. Look at my ring. I quit oh. today. She got the ring. And I was invited to her little boy's first birthday party. Oh, wow. Now he is his first day of kindergarten. And she is on Facebook with me and sends me pictures of him. He's gorgeous. He looks just like his daddy. And she has a wonderful, wonderful life. But I have so many people that have had, that have a wonderful life. The one that I said, you, you're gonna marry him, and she, she wrote me, you hit it right on the nose, how did you know? She sent me a beautiful letter now. They have a magnificent home, and her daughter is nine years old. And they were, I mean, they were just kids. That has to make you feel good. Oh, God, the most beautiful. Have you ever had a job or, or a, a business that gave you as much satisfaction as this one? Different kind of satisfaction. Okay, I would that's fair. Yeah, the singing was satisfying. Yeah, that when you hear the applause and you're out there on the stage, you're doing theater. You know more. That, that's very, very satisfying. You you feel good about yourself. Gotcha. But this is, this is warm, and uh, you know you're doing it for someone else, and mm -hmm. someone else found their love. I mean, there's so many wonderful. The nicest was an older person. She lost her husband. She sat in front of me, and she cried the whole time. And I said, Marianne, you didn't come here to cry and talk about him and how empty that chair looks in the den. You're here because we want to fill up that chair. Yeah. Dead. Let's do it. She looked like an older Melanie Griff. She was beautiful. And everyone, every man liked her. Then I called this man who was a maestro who I had matched a long time ago. And I said, are you still with the lady that I... I said, you know what? We just ended it. I said, well, I think I'm the woman for you, for real. Everything is just right. And he got a big bang of it. Oh, my God, little one, you never give up. I said, no, I never <laughs> give up. So I matched them, and I got a letter thrown in the slot of my door and she wrote me 
I don't know if you know uh, what the word mitzvah is, but you do like bar mitzvah. Right, it's a right. happy occasion. Right. It's the best mitzvah you've ever done, she said, because for whatever our years are left to come, they're going to be happy. Cool. Thank you for going into your archives, because I will. Yeah. I'll call someone from a long time ago. Are you Are you still single? <laughs> I do that a lot. So it's not, you know, it's just... I just know that they're the right person. Yeah. So, yeah. Cool. I love what I do. And if people are smart, they would know that that's the way to go. I, it, it makes sense uh, to me that, that at least then you know that you got a much better shot oh, God, of yeah. running into a genuine person rather than, you know, okay, 10 minutes into it, this she's full of crap you know none of the things that she wrote on here are true you know oh yeah I know. yeah she can't be a vegetarian if she's devouring that steak like that you know but is that hysterical really yeah or this this prude who then goes out and then gets yeah so what advice would you give to a woman who is is found herself back in the single scene or the dating scene or whatever you want to call it? Well, I think that she needs to, uh, if she's there already, and uh, they if they had a good marriage, they come right away. Men do. Men don't like to be alone at right. all. And um, I, I just think oh, coming to my office and seeing what I do and listening to me I'll help you, I coach you, uh, I give you advice. I've had people call me up and I, I know exactly what's, I had a man, you, you remind me of him actually, he had lost his wife, he said, I need to um, come to see you. I said, okay. Then he said, but it's the holidays, I, I, it's Christmas, it's very sad for me. Okay, then I had his daughter call me and said, I'm gonna get my father in there, he needs to get in there. John. So John came in and joined. Handsome man, white hair, little mustache, just a doll. Was a wine salesman. So he was real outgoing. And yeah. Very, very nice. So then, uh, that's my phone talking to me. I know. I guess. <laughs> so um, Judy came in and her husband had left her for some young girl on a golf course. <laughs> and she came in with her daughter. And her, she couldn't even talk because she was for clumsy. Choked up, yeah. Yeah. And her daughter was doing most of the talking. And she was stunning. Just stunning woman. Meanwhile, John was dating. I sent her out on a few dates. You know, these two are really adorable together. I'm matching them. It went from coffee to afternoon to evening. They never left each other. Okay, she called me the next day. Oh my God, he's a doll. We're going out this weekend. Okay, everything was wonderful. Three months, I get a phone call. How I know, because she's in JCPenney, I will never forget this. She's hysterical crying. He just broke up with me. I can't do this anymore. La, 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 la. Oh, he misses his feels. I said, okay, don't worry about it. He's feeling guilty. He is crazy about you. You're seeing each other every night. Yeah. I said, now he's going to miss you. He's thinking it's, he's missing his wife. He's feeling guilty that he's enjoying himself with you. Don't call him. Leave him alone. I give him two weeks. I, she was hysterical. I said, you'll see, two weeks. Two weeks go by, I get a phone call. We're getting married! <laughs> I said, I told you. Yeah. yeah, of course. You just, you have to... Yeah. What what? How do you how do you make that judgment? How do you say 
I mean, I know I've, I've known people that I thought, wow, those two would be great together. Yeah. And you put them together, and it's like oil disaster. and water. Oh, and it, it's a disaster. So how do you, how do you decide? Well, because that I do it, and I've done it. Yeah. So I just, and I. He may be your friend, and she may be your friend, but you haven't sat with them for an hour or two hours and listened to their heart and what. But I do. And that say, I guess you're right there. Okay. I do, so. I listened to that man and then read his feedback, don't forget, of other people. Gotcha. So I I know exactly when they're... Listen, I, I don't know how long we have, but you asked me. Now I'm just remembering. Please. One of the cutest stories ever. Older man calls me on the phone. I'm a widower. Okay. I can't do these dating sites. I need a classy woman, he said. My wife was classy. I, I, you know, I like to travel like this. I, oh, okay. Put the phone down. He didn't make an appointment. Man walks in the office. He's got sweatpants on. Egg stains on his sweatshirt. Coffee here, there. <laughs> Hair coming out of his ears. <laughs> Horrible haircut. Hi, I just got off the phone with you. I said, you did? You're the classy man, I said. And he said, yeah. I said, listen, what's your name? Michael, he said. I said, Michael, here's the deal. I'm not even going to say Neiman Marcus. I'm not even going to say Dillard's. Go into Macy's. Go into JCPenney. I don't care where you go. I said, but possibly more Macy's because they'll have someone that will help you. Or anywhere. Get a man to show you what's in. Go to a barber or a hairstylist. Have him give you a new haircut. Go home and cut the hair out of your ears and the nose and come back. Yeah. That's just what I told him. He walked in all new and shiny and bright. Sending them out. I had a woman that was a model. She was on a billboard. Older woman. And that evaluation I told you about. I'm going to use your paper. Sure, please. He'd come in and go like this. No. She was mean to the wait staff. No. I don't know who she thought she was. Oh, my God, he said. Didn't, every Monday this was. Because I'd give them people right. on the weekend. I'd see the car pull up. Okay. <laughs> One Thursday night, this woman comes in. She was going to retire from Nevada Energy. She had just lost her sister through cancer. She was a caretaker. She had taken care of her mother, who died of cancer. And she sat and looked at me, and she said, It's my turn. Cute woman. Did she look like a model like those other women? No. She looked very homespun, adorable, and sweet. I said, would you take a fixer-upper? <laughs> she goes, what do you mean? I said, someone, you may have to lay his clothes out because that's, he, he's used to that. She's sure I would. Okay. I introduce her, Diane to Michael. Okay. That's it. That's all I know. I match him. Monday morning, I see the pull, his car pull up. Brand new Genesis. He was the first person here to have a new Genesis. Gotcha. So I knew it was him. I went, oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Turn on the computer. And he's got the evaluation in his hand. I'm thinking, all right. He goes like this to me. God love him. What took you so long? <laughs> laughing, I'm going to marry her. I said, really, Michael? Oh, yeah. She doesn't know it yet. I'm going to marry her. He said, we met for coffee. He said, what are you doing later? She said, well, today's my day off, so I do errands. Can I do them with you? Want to go food shopping with me? Sure, I have nothing to do. Okay. He said, spent the afternoon with her, and he says, 
I said, well, what are you doing later for dinner? She says, well, probably going to cook. He says, nah, I've got tickets for the beach, boys. Let's go. Okay, she said, fine. He's got a picture with him of him and her that they took. He says to me the next day, my son had, or daughter, whatever, had a barbecue. We went. Today I sent her two dozen roses over at the office. This went on every day. He'd pick her up and he'd say, she, I don't, she calls me up in two weeks. She goes, might as well put me on hold. That's <laughs> yeah. what I call it. Right. Put me on hold. She says, I'm getting roses every day. He's a doll. I'm not going to date anyone else. He waits for me outside of work. I don't even, she's, now he picks me up, takes me to work, picks me up. I said, okay, cool. But my thing is, if it doesn't work and you go on hold, you can just call me up and say, okay. Right. And I start you all over again. Whatever time, how long you were on hold. One day, I'm going through the Sun Coast to go to the movies. There she is, having coffee with him in the ice cream shop. Elaine, Elaine, look, I got a promise ring. This is a 67-year-old woman, 63. He was 67. And I said, wonderful, Diane. Then he came by. She had her veins done. He carried her in the office. We're going to be married. We're going to Alaska. Oh, cool. I said, okay, cool. They've been married ever since. It's, I've got their, the, it must be about eight years now. Wow. Yeah. The, my people, once they, they, it, it Once worked. they get hooked up, it's they're there. hooked up. Yeah. What is your, what, what, what would be your youngest couple that you've put together? Well, I think it was that one that, uh, that I said you're going to hit it right on the nose. I think it was them. He was, she was 26. Okay. And he was maybe 33. Okay. And How about they, oldest? Uh, it might be Michael and Diane, but I did have the oldest person I had. I loved him. Norm, he passed away. Uh, Norm was a colonel in the uh, army. He was from Chicago. Uh, and he was a doll. He was in his 80s. But I had Nan and George. He bought her a condo and everything and until he died. Yeah, they were together. Cool. Yeah, and he was in his 80s, but he was not in, like an 80. Yeah. You know, there's 70 and there's 70. There's 60 and there's 50. I yes. mean, it depends on the person. Yeah, what is it if, if, uh, if 50 is the new 40, why isn't Thursday the new Friday? <laughs> I never heard that. I, I, loved it. It. I, I just saw it recently. I thought that was pretty cool. No, I, I really think 70s and the new 50. And I mean, God, remember your grandmother? Oh, listen, I, I think about that all the time. My grandmother and my grandfather, uh, you know, when I was young, they were, they were old, old at 50. Yeah. You know, 50 years old. Holy crap. You know, so now, that, you know, People tell me, oh, I'm 52, I'm getting old. Yeah, you have no clue what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah, I, and you know what? I remember saying to my mother when she was 35 and I was 17. Oh, God, yes. What's it like to be 35? Yeah. She's just like 17, only the outside yeah. changes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I like that. So what advice would you give to people that, that find themselves now? It's, it's like... Open your heart okay. and open your mind. Don't have a fixed... Don't be... Don't be in the box. Be open. If it's the second time around, just live. Like Auntie Mame says, hey, just live. Half the poor suckers are starving to death. Yes. You know? People, I don't know. It's fun. Life is fun. If you take advantage of it, yes. Because I always say when it stops being fun, stop doing it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So... So what if what is your goal for the next year? What have you got? Uh, you got anything planned that you're any big events going on? I don't or? do events. You don't do events. I I, I go I I take a booth. You attend to you attend events. I attend events. I I always have a booth at events where people can come by and actually meet me and talk to me and ask me questions. Then they it's much better for me. Cool. 
and um, do you have a presence on the web? On I have the internet, a beautiful website. Okay. Um, and Cheryl, Branch and we'll make sure everybody gets that info. Yeah. Okay. Uh, and Cheryl's teaching, doing something for me that I don't even know what she's doing. Oh, cool. Yeah. Because she knows what she's doing, technology, and I guess I'm just beginning to be in the new to get out there. Well, on the website, I'm out there. Believe right. me, I no, 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 and that's I what I meant, out there on the web. I network constantly. Yeah. Sometimes I don't even want to go when I go. Well, the, the thing that I found about networks that, that I think people miss is that a lot of people go to network events because I have something to sell, I want to sell it. Ah. Uh, okay? They don't realize that, well, maybe there's no one there buying what I'm buying, but they know people, I know people, and maybe there's nothing there for me, but you know what? My friend Sam over here has something that I think this person, you know what I mean? To me, that's what networking is about. It, that's, that, it that's, is. It's not just, okay, uh, I'm gonna go to this network event because I gotta sell this pen, you know? So that's the only reason that's that's my focus. I'm just going there to sell the pen. Oh, that's not right. No, it's it's that's lunacy. You, well, that's why you don't get any results. That's right. And because and you're not open. You're not open. And I do tell people that oh, well, I wouldn't join a dating service. Well, why not? Well, I do this. Well, how's that going for you? Yeah. Eh. And you Still people, single, I see. Yeah. <laughs> people keep doing the same thing over yeah. which is we all know is sign of insanity but but also don't you think that people have to be ready that's a great question but well, i think uh, people always want to have love I oh, have, it, there's there's I, no I doubt about it i don't think i don't think because it happens when you're i don't know i think it, it if you put yourself out there and you 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 are there and you let it happen, it happens. Of course. Nobody wants to grow alone. Yeah, I get it's that. It's not fun. Yeah. Not even going to a movie is fun alone. It, everything's better. Watching a baseball game, watching a football yep. game. It's better with somebody. Yeah, no, I get that. That you have fun with. Yeah. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to have to wrap it up here because yeah. we're running out of time. I see. Um, and I really want to thank you for coming. I have you're, a great you're time. You're welcome here anytime. Uh, if you've got events or whatever, okay. something that you want some help promotion, please give us a holler. Okay. And I want you to look into the camera, and I want you to tell people how they can uh, get a hold of you. Okay. And uh, what is your contact information? Well, it's Interactions Dating. Uh, just look it up on the uh, uh, Google me. Um, you can call me at 702-262-9600. 702-262-9600. Make an appointment with me. Come into my office. We'll have an interview and we'll talk. What should people not expect from your service? They should not expect to have happen what has been happening. They should open themselves up to a new experience and meeting the right people because most people have a bad picker, and I have a good one. <laughs> most people have a bad picker? Picker. There's a bad picker. <laughs> I have a good picker. All right. Well, <laughs> based on that... <laughs> Uh, I'd like to thank you all for joining us again today and coming back every week and seeing the show. I appreciate it. Uh, that's why we're here. Um, and I'd like to thank you, Elaine, so much for coming in and spending thank the time. You. And uh, it's like I always tell you, if you're going to do it, do it with styles. <laughs>